All right, guys. This week we've got a 1990 Chevy Suburban two-wheel drive, 1500. So it is a five lug truck. We're gonna um, lower it. We're gonna lose the running boards. And we're gonna not use as extensive of a kit as we did the last time on the OBS truck. So this will get, it will get an axle swap. I don't know yet if we're gonna notch the frame. We're gonna uh, do the axle swap and see how close it is to the frame. I have uh, notched these in the back before, but I don't remember. It seems like they may not really even need that. In the front, all we're gonna do is cut the coil springs. I'm gonna show you how to do that um, and how many rounds that we usually take off using the torch. This, um, I think this was an 87 uh, square body. <clears throat> this is actually a long bed. We lowered it last week. We did an axle swap. In other words, we put the axle on top of the leaf spring again just like we did the obs <clears throat> now this one doesn't need uh the not the c-notch kit in the back uh the front we cut around and three quarter off of the spring and that's all it needed and it looks good it's got <clears throat> plenty of suspension travel still and it's soft i did have to set the camber out a little bit you can see i added some shims did an equal amount on each side because a lot of times you'll when you lower these square bodies they'll well even like the obs any uh, a-frame suspension like that when you lower it it's going to camber in some and you need to compensate for that with some shims in the upper control arm so, you know, we don't have an alignment machine, um, but we just do an equal amount on each side and get it back close to where it was. You could go to an alignment shop from there and fine tune it. But this is the truck that I'm actually gonna do this week and we'll get started right now got the wheels off of this thing and i'm looking at the back of it here by the way this is a very clean truck no rust under here so that's good not a lot of dirt to be dropping down on us um so as uh we always do and we did last time you've seen in the obs video we take the rear diff and set it on top of the leaf spring that moves the axle closer to the vehicle gives the vehicle a lower ride height so <clears throat> basically uh we will be putting four inches of axle so let's move that to there that's four inches above the leaf spring Okay, so one, two, three, four inches on top of the leaf spring. That leaves us one, two, three, four inches before we ever hit the frame. Of course, the weight of the vehicle is not on the, on the car. So I am thinking that this is really going to be about like the Chevy truck. I don't think it's going to hit, but... What, we, what we'll do on this one, on the lat, on the OBS, what I do is I cut the, I notch the frame out because we know it's going to hit. I notch the frame out before I move the axle. Gives me more room to work. But in this case, I don't think that we notched the last Suburban out. Uh, we just, we don't do enough Suburbans and I can't remember. So I'm going to go ahead and do the flip set it on the ground 
and see how close we are to that frame. And any, if anything, we can't get a notch kit for it. It's hard to find one. So if anything, if I do have to notch it, I'll just cut a circle here and weld a half pipe in it. So I can make it work either way, but I'm just thinking, because we'll, what we'll do is we'll cut this bump stop out of there. We'll cut those rivets, cut that out of there. And I'm just about thinking that it won't hit. But we're gonna find out. And then, then the front, it's so like I said, what we do on the OBS, we put new springs in it, but usually on these square bodies, we're just taking a round and three quarter out of these springs. These springs are so long that you really don't lose any rod quality. But the first thing I'm gonna work on is just getting the running boards off. I think they're they're pretty easy to get off. You just got some self tappers and then uh, some ties that go into the frame there. I think we can knock that out pretty quick. So somebody commented in the comments of the uh, maybe the 50 GMC to S10 build that I talked too much and there was not enough work content that there were too many before and after videos so i'm going to try to improve on that i promise y'all we're doing the work it's not that i'm filming before somebody else does the work and then i film after so on these running boards if you've ever run across them they're pretty simple on these suburban you just get a 3 8 bolt there there that's that's in the i call that the mud flap maybe it's not but um same in the back in the rear you just take the front front loose rear loose well see that one just came right off and then you've got three self tappers or actually I guess it's pre-drilled, but who cares? Get those loose. I got my finger in the way of the camera again. I've got to get my tripod back. Okay, the third that goes into the, the body flange that runs under the doors. And then you've got one brace here that runs from the bottom of the running built board step to the frame of the vehicle. And you pop that loose and then your running board is off. So it's a total of one, two, three, four. Sorry for so much movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Little three eighths lag bolts or the heads are three eighths is all that holds that step on. But they hold, they're rugged. So that will allow us to become closer to earth. All right, so we've got some, uh, we've got our torches set up. We are going to cut these springs generally what i'll do is i'll cut around and three quarter which brings us to right here on this spring and i'll cut it twice i'll cut it the first time and then i'll cut it a second time the piece that uh just cut loose just so it's easier to get out of the uh, control arm also we'll take a, a sawzall and cut this bump stop off get that out of the way probably do that first so we gotta add some room here
that could torch that off. But usually I can I can buzz through them with this sawzall just as quick as I can get in there and torch them. Big thing you want to do too is hold on to that sawzall really good and don't let it grab and pull your finger up into the control arm and jam your finger all up. That has happened. So see, rid of that bump stop that usually just takes just a matter of seconds really with if not minutes what i'll do now is i'll move to the other side and go ahead and cut the other side loose so that part will be done so here's what that's going to look like after you've got that bump stop cut out of there just remove that so you got plenty of room now and uh usually cut around and three quarters out and uh that, that will never hit metal to metal we've never experienced that anyway you could put a, a bump stop back in there if you wanted to something smaller but um, usually that's not a problem at all so yeah at this point we will we'll go ahead and torch that spring as i said to get it right there i've got a sharpie mark on it already so this is always a problem with me i need my reading glasses but also need my torch glasses so Okay, so old girl just dang near jumped out of there. Let's get these pieces out of here that I cut. See, there you go. You got your, that's your round. And there's your three quarter. Just drop that on the ground for now and we can, uh, I'll usually just take a, a pry bar or something and pound knock that back in there so what you want to do is reseat the spring up top and that that spring see you can touch it we didn't get it hot up there up here we're just just right on the on the bottom there but you can take a pry bar or something and just Reseat that spring back in its spot most of the time. Of course, it's not going to work real easy while I'm filming, of course. Or while I'm recording, it's going to be goofy acting. in its place. Yep, right there. That's seated in its place. You can see there's a, a, 
I'll take my light here. There's a uh, a pocket there that that spring sits in, and then a perch up top. It's hard to get the camera angle in there, but it's all seated back properly. Once we put the weight on the back down on the vehicle, it'll um, it'll sit in there just nice. Some kind of wing nut down here in the you know found a wing nut in the spring pocket so then all you do is you go back and do or you go uh cut the other side do the same exact thing okay so we've got both sides seated both springs were cut and both sides seated in and uh we usually just do a little touch up with some spray paint cause these new wheels will be so big. And uh, they're spokes. So you'll see through them. So you wanna kinda clean that up. This is a 245-40ZR20 wheel. Or tire, 20 inch wheels. five lug go ahead and put our lug nuts on there get these front wheels mounted on so the front would just be finished then we'll have to do the back the back will be the big time consumer It's a test drive. Yeah, that's gonna look sweet. Sweet. That wheel looks small in that wheel well right now, but once it sits down on the ground, closes that gap up, she'll look really nice. So here we are again. We've got uh, the differential just above the tripods. I'm gonna take the U-bolts loose. See if that little D-wall to do the job. And um, get the leaf springs out of there. And there was a notch kit ordered for this one, but it doesn't seem to be exactly correct. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. We may have to make our own notch kit at that differential hits the frame so we'll see it should get interesting
There. It's probably been said before, but a little heat goes a long way. And we'll be, I'm sure, reusing these. So I'm just going to throw them right there on the ground. Mm. I'm going to touch those nuts. They would be hot. Set them right there. All right. Oh, that plate's hot. Hot plate. Just like at the restaurant, hot plate. All right, we'll just throw all that on the ground and let that cool. All right, so we've got that side loose. Now we'll go work on the other side. All right, I've got all the U-bolts out. The other side, the driver's side went exactly like the passenger side did, just very hard to get loose. Had to heat them up. I've got the shocks loose at this point. I'm going to raise the body up off of the differential. And then, well, she don't want to break loose yet to get the pry bar after her. Where did I put the pry bar? And we'll grab one somewhere. Leaf springs are just kind of stuck to the differential. It shouldn't take much to get it loose well yeah sometimes those little lineup pins are just there it goes that side broke loose now can we get this side loose mm. Sometimes things just, there it goes. She loose. Yeah, and I didn't tie my, my string around my rear end like I usually do to keep that from falling. Yeah, see how far the drive shaft's coming out of the transmission. We'll go ahead and get something tied around there just to, to keep that from happening. I don't want that drive shaft popping out of there. I mean, it it probably won't. We can take it. Yeah, but I've, I have had it happen before, so I don't want it to happen. Okay, so I've got the drive shaft tied up. My differential at a better angle. Should have plenty of room to get the leaf springs out. Now, one thing I did notice on these Suburbans, and I forgot about it, but it's just stupid. The shackle bolts release spring bolts that we have to get out they slide this way right up against that tire tub that's the spare tire tub so i don't remember what i did last time but somehow i have got to get that bolt out or maybe it could have been maybe i had enough room Maybe I took the front loose, dropped it, took the shackle loose and took the front of the leaf spring and pulled it out over the, and maybe pushed the rear end that way a little bit. Seemed like I did something like that. I guess we're gonna find out though, aren't we? I guess we'll start with this side and go ahead and get these leaf spring bolts out. Hopefully they won't be too bad to get out. This side's the same. Well, no, this side's not the same. See, you don't have the spare tire tub here. These bolts have just come right out. All right, so let's let's do that. Again, I'm trying to film the work because, like I said earlier in the video, someone commented that I talk too much and, and have too many before and after photos, so 
I'm learning. I think a seven eighths right there. Yep. I should have my earplugs in it. This it echoes under here so bad with that impact. So I'm going to put my earplugs in now. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to the front of the leaf spring. So the way this is designed up here, you cannot get a long wrench in it. So I'm gonna have to find me a short seven eighths. I know I have one somewhere to hunt it down. So I've got this short seven eighths. It works perfect for here. I can just get it on the nut and let it jam itself against the side of the shackle bracket as I loosen it. Tough, they don't make it easy. These springs are heavier than your relics. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna try, if you remember on this side, I can't get these leaf spring bolts out. So I've got the vehicle raised high enough, I hope, that I may be able to pick this up and swing it over that drum maybe let's see uh, I just guess I'm just still not high enough I'm starting to stretch the brake lines a little bit probably go a little <coughs> go just a, a wee bit more. Let me take that bolt right there out and the brake line just to give it a little give it a little stretchy poo.
Yep, that worked. That's scurry, just real scurry. As we go down, we have to keep adjusting this pinion angle. We've got to go down a pretty good ways. Without any help, sometimes you just got to get creative. Now, see if we can swing this leaf spring here back up under and get our bolt in. Can. Oh, maybe. Woo! It's like that needs to come that way. We need a hammer. So we got both our leaf springs in. This right here is the uh, flip kit. It's just as simple as this. A little more, a little less sophisticated than the last one I showed you, but the same principle. Basically, this is going to slide on top. Well, it's going to go. Doggone! It's so hard to film sometimes. It's going to go. Have to let her down just a little bit. Maybe we'll just go to the other side. Give me a little more. There we go. Okay, so as I said, the the hole is offset, so that swings your uh, axle back. It's the proper geometry there. And then it's just going to sit up in to those factory leaf spring perches <clears throat> same thing on the other side just like that and then the, the factory leaf spring perches will sit on that and that squares everything up so at this point we'll raise the the body up sitting on those new perches okay sometimes you just shove things around there it fell into place see it sits up under the leap the lip of that perch same on this side relocates the axle actually it doesn't really relocate it it recenters it so there All right, that's in there. So we can uh, we can go ahead and get the body up and get the full weight of the uh, differential on the springs. There, they're on there. So at this point, 
what will happen is you take the factory U-bolts, drop them down around the axle. Mm -hmm. Maybe we had time to cool down. Oh. Then you take your factory plates, put them right back in place. Now, that is going to, this will be off centered just a little bit. A lot of times we'll just go ahead and drill a extra hole, relocation hole right here, or you can slide it forward just enough to let your, your pin sit right in this valley. Either way of work. Okay, so again, on this side, same thing. Drop the U-bolts in there and get your factory plate on the bottom of the leaf spring. Just go ahead and pull those up. Push that forward so it's missing that lineup pin. Sometimes I'll just take a hammer and smack the back of that plate. Make sure it's far enough forward. It's just as simple as that. Take and uh, let's see. After we test drive it, go back and put a little retighten on those U bolts just in case something comes tries to loosen up a little bit. But I mean, now all I've got to do is put my my shocks get my shocks mounted back. Uh, we'll get these couple of brake line bolts back in. And get that strap off the drive shaft. And then we'll see how close we are to the frame. Which see, after we take this perch here off, I'm still not real sure, but at least, at least now, if we do have to make our own notches, we'll know exactly where to notch it we could just we could just cut a little circle out here and weld a half pipe in there maybe we shall see it is going to get kind of close we'll see, see what okay I've got the uh, bump stops off I forgot to film that, but at this point, I'm gonna set it down, back down on its uh, tripod, on the tripods. And again, I remember that this is not an exact representation of like the whole weight of the vehicle, but at least it'll tell me
plenty of tire clearance, but it is getting very close to the frame. I'm pretty certain that Man, that's close to that that gum body mount too. Pretty certain that once the whole weight of the vehicle is down, it's going to be even closer to that frame. So, yeah, we're absolutely going to have to notch it somehow or another. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get a while I've got the axle close to the body. I'm gonna go ahead and make a few marks here, or at least where I feel like it should be notched. It's probably gonna need something close to that, maybe even higher, maybe even bigger. Maybe right up next to that, but at least that gives us kind of an idea on this side. What I've decided to do is take this notch kit and I'm just gonna cut the notch out of it. And we'll cut that into the frame and weld it in. Cause I can't use all this. It just is not shaped for that frame. I was going to use like a half pipe, but I just don't, we don't have anything that big and it just takes so long to go hunting stuff down. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut that flange out of there and uh, we'll just weld that in, cut that notch out of the frame and weld it in. And that'll be good enough. And there we have it. We'll just trace that out in the frame, cut the frame and then weld that in. Go ahead and cut the other one while we're cutting. All right, so we've got our Suburban back in here and uh, it never left. We had some wiper issues we had to deal with and uh, the the rear um, shock extensions came in, so we put the shock extensions on here, as you can see. So when you lower these, the, the lower shocks sometimes are too long, and they were actually acting as the bump stops, so they were bottoming out and keeping this rear end from uh, flexing as far as it would. So now that we have the shock extensions, the uh, the rear axle is hitting the frame. I can bounce on the rear bumper with just my body weight and get it to hit the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and do that notch. Remember that this one we couldn't find the kit, so I cut 
some pieces out to fit in here and I already had marked it. So all the markings are done. And so all we got to do is cut it out and weld the pieces All in. right, I've got that notched out. That still seemed to be a little tougher in that frame than the OBS, the old body style, like the um, Beyond Square body and up. That was hard to cut out. It bent my saws all blade. All right, so anyway, yep, there we go, right there. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna weld that right in there. I'm gonna clean that steel up first. We'll weld that around. And there we have a, our axle relief. Okay, so if you remember, I cut these old, these uh, new notches apart, these new notch kits apart. And I basically, Cut that piece out of it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna weld that in there. And that's gonna be our notch. And I may brace the back side of it, I don't know yet. I'm just gonna kinda of take it as we go. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film this or not as I weld, I apologize. I've lost my tripod, I've looked everywhere for it. I don't know where it be. I'm gonna try to Right there, I've got you sitting on top of the brake drum. So maybe I can film a little bit of that. I don't want to film too much of the welding process. At a, I think that's not probably, probably, I think that is probably not good on my, my camera. But I'm not, I don't know. That's just what I hear. do is just get a couple spots on here I may have the wire speed a little fast but at least that'll hold it for now right wire speed may be a little fast okay so we've got the passenger side cut out and we'll take this notch at this point and put it in there and get it welded but the thing you got to watch for on the passenger side is this clump of fuel lines right there so um especially when you're welding Fortunately, pretty much that's going to be a heat shield for that fuel line. And uh, we'll weld it a little bit at a time. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Okay, so we've got the passenger side notched and welded. And that should give that rear axle plenty of room. Now it shouldn't bump. Yeah, she she's uh, sitting quite low in the back now, but it's not hitting, doesn't seem to be hitting. Shouldn't hit with those notches, canotches. So let's take it down the road. See what we got. driveway has a couple of good dips in if it's going to hit anywhere to hit here 
spare tire and stuff rattling around back there but so far we're good on the axle yeah, it shouldn't hit put some pretty big notches back there I couldn't get them couldn't get them perfectly centered with the axle because of where the body mount is So I was kind of worried about the axle, the rear of the axle hitting the rear of the notch, but I think there's uh, plenty of room. If it did hit, I could recenter those uh, flip kits just a little bit. Well, it seems to be fine though. Yeah, this will be a nice cruiser. wipers working this thing had the wiper delay wouldn't work on it ended up being a bad wiper motor we thought it was the wiper control module which you can't find those new anymore we had to find one off of ebay and that didn't fix it that thing there So, got everything working as it should on this vehicle. Low on fuel. Caster must be a little bit off. The steering don't want to return to center really quick like it should. dang traffic these days it's ridiculous but anyway we appreciate y'all watching this will probably be the end of this video unless we decide to lower the front just a little bit more I don't want to I don't want the front wheels to start scrubbing. All right, this hump right here, if it don't bump, yeah, it's good. Nice and smooth, really smooth riding vehicle. All right, that's it then, see y'all. Uh, appreciate y'all watching and uh, really means a lot. Thank you.